In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve quadratic equations by completing a square. So let's consider this example. x squared plus 12x plus 32. Let's say it's equal to 0. So how can we solve this by completing a square? The first thing you should do is move the 32 to the other side. So you want to subtract both sides by 32. And so what we have now is that x squared plus 12x, and I'm going to leave a space, is equal to negative 32. So now we need to complete the square. To do this, look at the middle coefficient, the number in front of x. Divide 12 by 2. Half of 12 is 6, and then you want to square it. So you want to add 6 squared to both sides. Now on the left side, I'm going to leave it as 6 squared because there's this nice and simple technique that you can use to factor this expression. You can literally see everything that you need. It's going to be x, and then whatever this sign is, it's positive. So x plus 6 squared. That's how you can factor it. On the right side, we have negative 32 plus 6 squared. 6 times 6 is 36. And negative 32 plus 36 is 4. So what should we do at this point? At this point, take the square root of both sides. On the left side, the square root and the square will cancel, leaving behind just x plus 6. On the right side, the square root of 4 is two answers, plus or minus 2. And so we're going to write two equations. So the first one, x plus 6, is equal to positive 2. And the second one, x plus 6, is negative 2. So let's subtract 6 from both sides. So 2 minus 6 is negative 4. And let's do the same here. Negative 2 minus 6 is negative 8. So therefore, the two answers are x is equal to negative 4 and negative 8. And so that's how you can factor I mean, that's how you can solve quadratic e equations by uh, completing a square. So here's the next example. x squared minus 8x plus 10 is equal to 0. So just like before, we're going to move the 10 to the right side. If you want to try it, feel free to do so. Now, don't forget to leave a space. So now let's complete the square. Half of 8 is 4. Now, don't worry about the negative sign. Make it positive. And don't forget to square it. So we need to add 4 squared to both sides. Whatever you do to the left side, you must also do to the right side in order that the value of the equation, the value on both sides, doesn't change. So now, how can we factor the expression on the left? Now, remember, you don't have to think about it. You can literally see everything you need. So first, we have an x. And then whatever sign is here, we're going to put here. So it's x minus and whatever we see here. So we're going to put the 4 on the inside, but the square on the outside. So it's x minus 4 squared. On the right, 4 squared is 16. Now, negative 10 plus 16 is 6. So at this point, we could take the square root of both sides. So on the left is simply x minus 4. On the right, plus or minus square root 6. Now, because we can't simplify this into a whole number or even an integer, we're not going to separate it into two equations. Instead, all we're going to do is add 4 to both sides. So the final answer is x is equal to positive 4 plus or minus the square root of 6. So this is it. You can leave the answer just like that. Now, if you need to get the decimal value for x, then you want to separate it into two answers, 4 plus the square root of 6 and 4 minus the square root of 6. But in most problems, you can leave the answer like that. So 4 plus the square root of 6 as a decimal is about 6.45 if you round it to the nearest hundredth. And 4 minus the square root of 6 
is 1.55. So you could convert your answers to a decimal value if you wish. Now what about an example that has a negative sign in front of it like this? What do you think we need to do? Now you can move everything to the other side or you can multiply both sides by negative one or divide both sides by negative one. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative one. So just divide everything by negative one. So this is going to be positive x squared plus four x minus nine is equal to zero. Zero divided by anything other than zero is going to be zero. So now let's move this to the right side. So x squared plus 4x is equal to 9. Now let's complete the square. Half of 4 is 2. So we're going to add 2 squared to both sides. So now how can we factor the expression on the left? So remember you could see everything you need. It's going to be x and then whatever this sign is, plus 2 squared. And on the right, we have 9 plus 4. So this is x plus 2 squared is equal to 13. So let me just uh, rewrite this on top. So now let's take the square root of both sides. So on the right, it's simply, I mean on the left, it's x plus 2. And on the right, it's going to be the square root of 13, which we can't simplify. So all we could do is subtract both sides by 2. So the final answer is negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 13. And you know how to convert this to a decimal value if you want to based on the last example. So now let's move on to the next problem. Sometimes you may have a leading coefficient that's not 1. In this case, it's a 2. So let's try this example. So let's follow the same steps. Let's move the 8 to the other side first. So this is 2x squared minus 10x, leave a space, and that's equal to negative 8. Now what I want you to do is to get rid of this 2. So we're going to divide everything by 2. So x squared minus 5x is equal to negative 4. Now let's complete the square. So half of 5 is 5 over 2 and then square it. Don't include the negative sign because once you square it it's going to be positive anyway. Now whatever you do to the left you must do to the right. So let's add 5 over 2 squared to the right side. So now how can we factor this expression? Let's see if you know what to do in this problem. So what we have here is an x, and then a minus sign, and then whatever is here. So it's going to be x minus 5 over 2 squared. This is when knowing this technique becomes a lot easy. Because you don't want to factor a trinomial that has a fraction, like 25 over 4. It's not going to be fun. 5 squared is 25, 2 squared is 4. So now what we need to do is add these two numbers. So let's get common denominators. So negative 4 is the same as negative 4 over 1. And I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 4. So it becomes negative 16 over 4. Negative 16 plus 25, or 25 minus 16, that's a 9. So we have 9 over 4. And now let's find the square root of both sides. The square root of 9 is 3, the square root of 4 is 2, and it's plus or minus. So now I'm going to add 5 over 2 to both sides. So it's 5 over 2 plus or minus 3 over 2. Now we don't have a square root, so we can combine those two fractions to give us two separate answers. So the first answer is going to be 5 over 2 plus 3 over 2. 
5 plus 3 is 8, so that's 8 over 2, which reduces to 4. So x is equal to 4. Now the second answer is going to be 5 over 2 minus 3 over 2. 5 minus 3 is 2, and 2 over 2 is 1. So x is equal to 1. So we got 4 and 1. Now let's look at another similar example. You can try it if you want to. 3x squared minus 8x plus 5 is equal to 0. So let's move the 5 to the right side. So it's going to change from positive 5 to negative 5. And now before we complete the square, let's get rid of the coefficient. So let's divide everything by 3. So we're going to have x squared minus 8 over 3x, and that's equal to negative 5 over 3. Now let's complete the square. So what is half of 8 over 3? Half of 8 is 4. So we're going to add 4 over 3 squared to both sides. Never forget to square it after you basically divide this in 2. So whenever you have a fraction, by the way, there's two ways in which you could divide it by 2. So let's say if you have 10 over 7 and 5 over 3. If you wish to divide this by 2, one way to do it is divide the numerator by 2, which becomes 5 over 7. If you want to divide this by 2, 5, 2 doesn't go into 5. So the other way to divide a fraction by 2 is to multiply the denominator by 2. So this becomes 5 over 6. So those are the two ways in which you could divide a fraction by 2. You can divide the numerator by 2 or multiply the denominator by 2. Both ways will work the same. But sometimes it's more convenient to multiply the denominator by 2 in the case of 5 over 3, just in case you encounter that situation. Now let's complete the square. So it's going to be x minus whatever we see here. So x minus 4 over 3 squared. On the right side, 4 squared is 16. 3 squared is 9. So now we need to get common denominators. So let's multiply negative 5 over 3 by 3 over 3. So we're going to have x minus 4 over 3 squared, and that's equal to negative 15 over 3. I mean, actually, negative 15 over 9 now, plus 16 over 9. Negative 15 plus 16 is 1. So we have 1 over 9. And now let's take the square root of both sides. So x minus 4 over 3 is going to be plus or minus. The square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 9 is 3. So it's plus or minus 1 third. So now let's add 4 over 3 to both sides. So x is equal to 4 over 3 plus or minus 1 over 3. So let's separate it into two answers. So we have 4 over 3 plus 1 over 3 and also 4 over 3 minus 1 over 3. So 4 plus 1 is 5. And 4 minus 1 is 3. And 3 divided by 3 is 1. So the two answers in this example are 5 divided by 3 and 1. So now you know how to solve quadratic equations by completing the square. And so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.